Look, I get that it's the off season for the NFL, but is there really ever an off season? You get the combine, even the senior bowl before that, and then free agency, which just consumes the entire month of March before the NFL draft even starts to get going in April. And if you're in a fantasy football league, which I believe a lot of you are, a video like this is going to help you because so much stuff just happened in free agency. And we're only really going to focus on the offensive side of the ball. That's mostly what we care about for fantasy. And we'll start right here with what is one of the bigger wide receivers to go in free agency, because a lot of the wide receivers in your T Higgins, your Michael Pittman's heck even Mike Evans they just re-upped with their team maybe got the franchise tag but Marquise Brown he's leaving Arizona he's going to a new team his third team the Ravens Arizona and now the Chiefs where he's going to have potentially a ton of opportunity because last season this Chiefs offense wasn't great at getting downfield in their passing attack Rashi Rice was known for the underneath passes Travis Kelsey basically hung out in that 10 to 15 yard area they didn't have a field stretcher Marquez Valdez Scantling wasn't consistent at getting open so much so that Patrick Mahomes ranked 36 sixth amongst all quarterbacks in the NFL there's only 32 teams so yeah some backups were in there ahead of him at deep ball completions in 2023 but now they add Marquise Brown who has speed you can see right here the dude ran in the low four threes during the NFL combine a couple of years ago but not only that he's shown this in game speed he's produced in major ways with the Ravens he had flashes when healthy and that's a key here with the Cardinals and last year he was top 20 in downfield efficiency in his limited sample in a much worse offense than he's about to go into with a much worse quarterback than he's about to get in Patrick Mahomes so yes there is some upside here and look I don't think you're going to see what you saw in 2021 when he was the Ravens number one wide receiver and Mark Andrews got hurt and he had 145 targets I don't think that's going to be this offense when you have a Rashi Rice a Travis Kelsey still there but what he will do is stretch the field and when he's stretching the field going deep that opens up opportunities for himself but also opens up a lot more underneath and less attention there for a Rashi Rice especially yards after the catch or Travis Kelsey and now one more thing on Marquise Brown and we're spending a little bit more time here than in some other spots because this is a massive of addition for fantasy one of the best offenses the best quarterback is now getting a really appealing wide receiver in my opinion the biggest concern is maybe the injuries last year you can see right here 2023 he dealt in the preseason with a hamstring never great for a speedy wide receiver to start the year that way and then a sore heel and the heel was a pretty big one because he missed four games to end the year and he was on the injury report for seven so about half the season he started the season two games on the injury report with that hamstring so more than half the year he was on the injury report he wasn't 100 himself and that's going to happen with these speedy receivers but you hope that it's later in their career overall I think this is a nice addition for the Chiefs now there was a pretty big and a couple of big moves for the Jets let's talk about it. and all of these moves were around one position group the offensive line their biggest move probably signing the former Cowboy left tackle who still has some skills definitely when he's healthy in Tyron Smith they signed Jake Hansen they traded for Morgan Moses who was on the Jets a couple of years ago that's a right tackle so they secured their tackles and they also added John Simpson who will be a starting guard for them now the reasons why they did these things is pretty obvious I mean they started last year and they had a couple of guys out there Mekhi Becton some backup offensive linemen and that led to Aaron Rodgers getting hurt early on because a guy came right through and tore his Achilles and now with Aaron Rodgers coming off of an Achilles injury and being 40 years old the Jets kind of want to say you know what let's put everything we can into this maybe they'll even draft some guys although I doubt that with a top 10 pick but there's a chance and it becomes pretty obvious outside of just the Aaron Rodgers injury even for the rest of this year when other quarterbacks were under center look they had the 30th ranked pass blocking unit last year when you look at their run blocking 27 so when you see some inefficiency or bad games from Brees Hall and he's popping off at fantasy analysts on Twitter which is what he was doing like half the games last year which is kind of funny but when you see those games it's because yeah he was running behind a bottom five run blocking unit he had no space and he still had some monster performances because he's that talented so much so that he was able in 17 games didn't miss a game off of that torn ACL he was able to put up basically a thousand yards but also the big one nearly 600 yards receiving so almost 1600 total yards in what was a season behind a terrible offensive line with terrible quarterback play so it doesn't look like the Jets did a lot this offseason when you're just looking at the skill position groups but that right there the offensive line is going to be a major help for the passing attack but definitely Brees Hall now the next piece of major news was one that was kind of a shocker and it was Calvin Ridley going to the Titans no he did not go back to the Jaguars like he wanted to because the Titans said hey we're gonna give you a bag of money and he said okay let's see 50 million guaranteed yes sir I will sign up for Tennessee and what I'm getting from this other than the Titans really wanting to secure Calvin Ridley with that bag and maybe take him away from a division rival is they want to see what they have in Will Levis you have Hopkins you have Ridley they also added who we'll talk about later Tony Pollard and it's worth pointing out that Ridley last year he had an up and down year but he was kind of in this weird role where he was being used on the outside to run go routes which isn't really his game route running is his game and when he had that role a little bit more when some players on the team were injured you saw him be utilized more in the middle of the field in the Y wide receiver role not the X perimeter guy running go routes and it led to him earning a lot of targets on the year he had eight targets per game he stayed relatively healthy on the season and this was a guy who basically hadn't played football for two years going out there and still showing an ability to 
to earn targets, the 14th most targets in the NFL. And that was when he was not in an optimized role. You're hoping now in Tennessee that will happen more because DeAndre Hopkins will be on the outside and you won't have to have Ridley operating running go routes. That'll be Hopkins job. Now there is another side to this Ridley signing. And I think Bradley St Stadler, I believe it is on Twitter, does a nice job here. He basically just says the big winner is Christian Kirk. And I also believe this because now in two wide receiver sets, there'll be no question about it. Christian Kirk will go on the outside in Jacksonville with his new teammate who we'll talk about a little bit later on in Gabe Davis. But before we get to a guy like Gabe Davis, we have to talk about one of the biggest, if not the biggest signings when it comes to fantasy football. And that's Derrick Henry. He gets 9 million fully guaranteed to go to the Ravens. And it seems like for the last like two years, these two sides in Derrick Henry and Baltimore have been flirting to come together because I mean, it just seems like an unbelievable duo. Lamar Jackson, who you just can't tackle because he's so elusive and Derrick Henry, who you just can't tackle because he's 200 and nearly 50 pounds of muscle. Yes, this should be exciting. And now some people might not be all that excited because Derrick Henry is now going to be 30 years old and we kind of missed the prime of his career in a better situation like this, maybe in Baltimore, but he has shown no signs of slowing down. Not only did he yet again lead the NFL in carries with 280 last year, over 300 total opportunities when you factor in his receptions and targets, that's four to five years now going over that 300 mark. But Henry also ranked top 10 in broken tackles, in yards created, and breakaway runs. That's runs of 10 plus yards, so sort of these explosive runs. He still had it last year. And potentially part of that was because he saw a lot less of a workload in terms of his snap share. If we scroll down last year, you can see he only ended up playing last year 54% of the snaps. He split the snaps with the rookie Tajay Spears. He came off the field on a lot of passing down situations. It gave him a little bit more of a breather, maybe less wear and tear on the body overall from a blocking standpoint. So hey, if anything, this kind of helps him in his year this year, 2024 with the Ravens. So I'm excited to see that combination. You have Keaton Mitchell coming off of a devastating multi-ligament knee injury. So he's probably not going to be a full go week one. This is Derrick Henry's job. That might seem obvious, but just to kind of touch on that, this is Derrick Henry's role. Now, a little bit of a sneakier signing, in my opinion, and you can see Spot Track, a great website for all contract purposes, and also a Twitter account here is Curtis Samuel to the Bills. He gets three years, $24 million, $13 million guaranteed at signing. Basically, what this comes down to, and I like this part of Spot Track, they make it really practical for people like me who don't really know every single detail of the salary cap and kind of how these things work. Two years, $16 million, a pretty good contract for Curtis Samuel. And now, what this tells me is that he's going to have a legit opportunity to battle for the number two wide receiver role here with somebody that the Bills are high on in Khalil Shakur. And look, Curtis Samuel has been a name who's been out there a lot. He's a versatile player and he was good last year before an injury. He was top 25 in efficiency and top 30 in fantasy production. Now that was the first eight weeks of the season, but then he ended up getting hurt. In week eight, he had a toe injury. And then in week nine, he had that injury even worsen. And you can see right here, he was basically on the injury report for five at another week here, six weeks with this toe issue. And when you're a wide receiver, a toe issue is pretty damn difficult to deal with, especially when you're trying to be explosive in the short areas. Overall, though, I think this is a fun combination, not only in the middle of the field, but also downfield. If he wins that number two job, and this is a big if, we'll have to track the training camp, the preseason, the offseason notes that we're getting from OTAs, and he's going to be in two wide receiver sets, which is a massive opportunity, probably automatically makes him a top 40 to 45 receiver at worst when you're paired with Josh Allen. So Curtis Samuel is one former Washington commander from last year, and another one is Antonio Gibson, who was deemed a top target from the Patriots' new offensive staff, and that's where he landed, the Patriots. He was a top target in free agency. He's already being deemed a big part of this offense, which is interesting when they have Ramondre Stevenson there. But we did see Ramondre Stevenson kind of take a step back in regress. Last year, he didn't earn as many targets as the year before. Maybe that was just naturally going to happen because he had a massive 2022. But also, was he injured? Was it just kind of the volume? We don't really know what was going on there. We don't have the full picture still. But what we do know is that Antonio Gibson is now there. He's deemed this big priority for them. He had a career-high 48 catches last year and look at this very quietly it was a smaller sample he wasn't getting a 300 touch workload like Derrick Henry but he was averaging 5.8 yards per touch that was top five number four in the entire NFL so still mostly as a pass catcher he was efficient and if you're not fully familiar with Gibson in college he was kind of this wide receiver running back hybrid more so a wide receiver so it makes sense when we always see him being a quality receiving option that he puts up big numbers like this kind of quietly kind of makes sense where that's his background he's a little bit more efficient and elusive after the catch now here's sort of an interesting deal that doesn't really do a lot for me personally but we have to talk about it because the Bengals they ended up not re-signing Joe Mixon after he took pay cuts for them in the past and then they let him go late which is kind of a dicky thing to do because then you don't have a lot of opportunities to find a suitor Joe Mixon did we'll talk about that but Bengals signed Zach Moss to replace Mixon as of now two years eight million dollars look this isn't a crazy deal it's like four million per year when you factor in the guarantees he's getting like two and a half to three million dollars guaranteed a year nothing wild here and what that means is this doesn't lock him up as the starting running back maybe it gives him a little bit of an edge over the second year player in Chase Brown in this backfield 
field who's not getting paid as much there but what you need to know is that Zach Moss wasn't anything crazy last year I mean he averaged 4.7 yards per touch 29th in efficiency that's not bad that's not great it's just a fine running back maybe a little bit above average he had six starts last year and he did average over 100 yards per game in those starts so that's good to see that's factoring in his receiving yards so he was productive there especially early on in the year but this is the big issue that you're going to see Chase Brown and this is from player profile they actually have Chase Brown ahead of right now Zach Moss in the way that they're ranking it could just be coincidental might not actually be their order the way that this is laid out but Chase Brown look he this guy was averaging nearly six yards per touch last year he had some fumbling issues as a rookie that's a concern we also saw his senior bowl performance you go back over a year ago in March when Chase Brown was at the senior bowl but he was very explosive he was a great producer a great athlete also at Illinois when he was in college and then last year it showed through 5.8 yards per touch he is a more dynamic back just less experienced you can say than a Zach Moss so I'm not kind of buying the Zach Moss right now maybe he's that touchdown guy eight to ten touchdowns but Brown is the guy who later on in the year you probably want on your fantasy teams is the way that I'm looking at it right now so we've talked about all these signings but there was also a couple of trades that went down that were important now let's talk about one of the bigger ones and reminder we're talking about the AFC here we'll get to the NFC guys in a future video in a couple of days but that trade is Jerry Judy he ends up going to the Cleveland Browns they get a fifth and a sixth round pick the Broncos for him the Broncos didn't do a lot in this free agency cycle we'll get to them later but one thing they did do was really not get their guys back and that's probably a reason for it they want to collect some assets here under Sean Payton kind of a new regime starting last year Jerry Judy is now a Brown he's going to push Elijah Moore for the number two role there in that offense and look he wasn't great last year Jerry Judy 53rd in wide receiver efficiency but worth pointing out the previous two seasons well he was top 25 in wide receiver efficiency and even if he doesn't beat out Elijah Moore for the wide receiver two job here we know Amari Cooper's the wide receiver one we know David Njoku is going to have a big role in this offense again even if he doesn't beat out Elijah Moore for those two wide receiver sets he is still an upgrade for sure from a Cedric Wilson from you can scroll down to some other guys David Bell these are up uh, previous in the past draft picks the last two years for this team he's definitely an upgrade from those guys so it's going to lead to more target competition in three wide receiver sets for an Elijah Moore to an extent in Amari Cooper but mostly in Elijah Moore so either way this definitely hurts Elijah Moore it'll come down to camp and OTAs I can't tell you right now who's going to be the wide receiver two on this team these were two guys that were traded each of the past two off seasons for with not crazy capital given up for them Elijah Moore had a fine year last year we'll see what happens in OTAs between these two and now let's stay on the Denver Broncos losing some of their big pieces this offseason and we'll go to the quarterback position where we see the Steelers making some big moves as they acquire Russell Wilson and they also recently more recently at least acquired Justin Fields which is the big talk of the town it's going on all the talk radio shows even though it's not you know the biggest deal in the world when he's going to be competing with Russell Wilson but here's the deal they're saying Russell Wilson's going to start there's not a lot of money that the Steelers have to pay him so there's a chance that Justin Fields does start at some point later on this year if Wilson struggles but for the start of the year it's going to be Wilson and it might not sound great to you that it's Russell Wilson but this is an upgrade from Kenny Pickett it's an upgrade from Mason Rudolph those guys were not doing much of anything last year for this Steelers team you can see Russell Wilson last season he was actually top 10 in true completion percentage now how often was he throwing downfield how accurate was he there not so much 27th in deep ball completion percentage but he was throwing a lot downfield top 10 so that skews it a little bit either way Russell Wilson is an upgrade from what we saw out of Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett last year but maybe the biggest winner from all of the moves that the Steelers did getting a quarterback upgrade and maybe two spots with also Justin Fields and then also shipping away who we'll talk about in the NFC video Deontay Johnson this means that George Pickens is a massive winner now as the wide receiver one on this team Pickens led the NFL in yards per catch last year and now he gets to pair with Russell Wilson which mixes well because Wilson loves throwing the ball deep he has his whole career and he was even top 10 last year and the last three seasons in deep ball attempts we mentioned Joe Mixon earlier in the video let's talk a little bit more there you can see John Crumpler on Twitter he points out how they're basically getting this nice and consistent back in Houston now as Joe Mixon signed with the team then he got a three-year extension from Houston so good for Joe Mixon there and John on Twitter or X whatever you want to call it he's not wrong Joe Mixon has been consistent he's had 1200 or more total yards in three straight seasons he's been a nice red zone back and he can get in the end zone for the past you know five or six years that he's been active in this league but Mixon also consistently the last five years has ranked outside the top 36 running backs in efficiency he basically needs volume to produce and that's probably what he's going to get though in Houston so that is the good news for fantasy because not only did they sign him and extend him to a three-year deal saying hey we are committed to you his only other competition is Damian Pierce who only averaged like 2.3 yards per carry last year was beat out by Devin Singletary at the midway point of the season for his job and Joe Mixon even if he's been less efficient the last three to five years is definitely a better running back than what we saw out of Damian Pierce last year not to mention he's still in a solid offense an exciting quarterback so there should be those red zone opportunities for Mixon now the biggest move that the Colts made as we look at Fantasy Life's tweet here about Michael Pittman getting the franchise tag he would later sign a three-year extension this is the biggest move that they made it wasn't bringing in anybody new it was just kind of keeping their own and their number one wide receiver for Anthony Richardson their quarterback who should be returning from an injury 
surgery in a couple of months to start OTAs. And you can see right here from Matt Harmon, he has a site reception perception. He is great with everything wide receivers. Give him a follow, a friend of the show. You can see that he said Michael Pittman last year, 74% success rate against man coverage and an 80% success rate against both press and zone coverage. That is great. He is beating all different types of coverages at all different levels of the field. And that led to him earning a career high 156 targets, top 10 in the NFL in targets and overall volume. And that was with for the far majority of the season, Gardner Minshew as his quarterback. Your hope and goal would be that Anthony Richardson, this top five overall pick that they took last year, will be better than Gardner Minshew. And not only that, but as of right now, there's no new competition. It'll be second year player Josh Downs, who was a solid option last year, but didn't threaten as the number one receiver in this offense. Alec Pierce, mostly, you know, an X receiver at times, just go downfield and try and win a jump ball, hasn't shown too much. So Michael Pittman, unless they draft the receiver early on, doesn't have much new competition he's dealing with. All right, so we teased this a little bit earlier on in the video talking about Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk and all that fallout. Now, Gabe Davis, he signed. He was one of the first players to sign in free agency, a three-year deal with the Jaguars, which led to a lot of speculation. Is Calvin Ridley back? Is he not back? Does this mean they're cutting Zay Jones and Gabe Davis will have the Zay Jones role? Nope. It just means that they try to get Calvin Ridley back, didn't work out, and now Gabe Davis will be the X receiver on the outside. He's getting paid pretty decent money in the mid-teens to have this role, so he's going to be out there often in probably two wide receiver sets with Christian Kirk most likely. And look, he has a lot of flaws as a receiver, but he adds a dimension to this team that they needed all of last season for sure in a downfield field stretcher. The Jaguars only ranked 16th in deep ball completion percentage last year. They were throwing up a bunch of balls and just not really completing a lot of them because they didn't have the guys to do it. Calvin Ridley is not that guy to just go win on a go route downfield. So now when you look at the competition that we're seeing here, it's likely the three wide receiver sets are definitely going to be Christian Kirk wide receiver one, Gabe Davis. They'll probably roll in Evan Ingram in some formations as well as a receiver, but then Zay Jones is the third traditional wide receiver is how it lines up right now. Parker Washington, who had flashes last year, second year player out of Penn State, a later, I think maybe a fifth round draft pick from them. He's kind of this sleeper option now for how he can factor into some three wide receiver sets. But to start the year, it's Gabe Davis on the outside stretching the field. Was never really efficient in uh, Buffalo, which is a concern because Steph Diggs was stealing a lot of attention and he still couldn't get it done, even though he had Josh Allen. We'll see if they can get a new or a better improved role for him now that he is in Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence. And we'll keep it in that same division. We talked about Calvin Ridley earlier. Now let's talk about their backfield addition in Tony Pollard. Because Pollard left the Cowboys after his first full year as the guy there and he signed a three-year 24 million dollar deal to be the titans it seems rb1 and look pollard was less efficient in 2023 he had a larger workload that could be a reason for it as a somewhat smaller back but also he had off-season surgery before that tightrope ankle surgery and he hinted after the season that that was still kind of affecting him at least for part of the year we saw him start to come on at the end of the year so maybe that's when he started to feel a little healthier so now the big question becomes what happens with tajay spears an exciting second year player a younger player that tennessee drafted and he was very explosive very efficient per touch had a ton of big breakaway runs was stealing almost 50 plus percent of the snaps from Derrick Henry last year well in my opinion I think Tajay Spears is great there are a lot of medical issues he doesn't have I think like one of his ACLs he has a similar problem going on with his knee that Todd Gurley had so he doesn't have a long NFL career in his in his plans probably another two or three years that shouldn't affect this year but that's definitely on the mind of the Titans as they look to try and add a guy like Tony Pollard I would assume and they just signed Tony Pollard to 24 million not all that is guaranteed of course but he's probably going to be the guy to early on start here and also he's bigger than Tajay Spears. He's not a big back Pollard, 210, 215 pounds, but Spears is only around 200 pounds. So it looks like Pollard will also earn a red zone role. At least that's what I'm thinking. Logic, you got a bigger back there. He had a lot of carries last year in the red zone. He's shown that he can hang handle that type of workload. We'll see if he can be more efficient in Tennessee with them. One thing I do want to point out to you, the beautiful viewer, is that the 2024 Fantasy Blueprint is now available for pre-order. It is at a discount. Uh, right now it is $10 for the entire year, not just for just your draft. You can see right here, these are the two simple steps to get it. You follow the link in the description below or you can scan let's put it right now qr code on the screen and basically it's, it's going to have everything you need for your draft you know your rankings your tiers your projections whatever it might be for that sleepers and all these types of guys but then also the rest of the year all the way up until your fantasy playoffs in like december so you get the entire year for one price of ten dollars when you sign up with our partner this year which is going to be sleeper there's a qr code somewhere over here right and there's also the link in the description below if you want to get that early access to it i'll start be dro i'll start dropping those over the summer let's get back to breaking down these free agents and this one is really interesting because i think this is under the radar and it's that the Chargers went out there and he, they got gus edwards to be their running back and here's the deal their new coach jim harbaugh old school coach coming from michigan very run heavy offense he's always been a run heavy type of guy and he goes out and signs a old school running back despite him being 29 years old and gus edwards who's not going to catch passes he's just going to run downhill and i mean edwards has been great in his career up until last year he was averaging five over five yards per carry in his career and then 
then he comes back last year as an older running back coming off of an injury just 4.1 yards per carry but he was also getting a ton of carries in the red zone and within five yards of the line of scrimmage so when you're getting you know 15 goal line carries obviously you can't get more than a yard on those carries or less than a yard so it's going to affect your yards per carry overall but it is worth pointing out that he is getting this guy Jim Harbaugh is getting this running back from his brother John Harbaugh who poached Gus Edwards the last five years you assume they talked and said hey how is this guy you think he's still got some juice we want to sign him we know you don't need him you got Derrick Henry yeah yeah, yeah. he's definitely great so I think there's something to that and right now their running back room is Gus Edwards who they just signed probably the RB1 as it stands and then Joshua Kelly who will definitely factor in Isaiah Spiller they drafted a couple years ago never really panned out I believe out of Texas A&M there's obviously the NFL draft it's not a great class for running backs but if they did sign one of the top three or four guys who stand out a little bit above the rest of course that starts to factor in a little bit here and there are some pure runners in this class who aren't really pass catchers that Jim Harbaugh will probably like maybe even his guy that he had last year in Blake Core. now one team that didn't do a ton in free agency they did make some moves and one was signing Gardner Minshew to two years 15 million dollars guaranteed in this contract that doesn't mean he's definitely going to be the starter with that type of money I think I saw on Twitter it means he's like the 28th paid and guaranteed quarterback money but he probably does based on the market based on when they're drafting meaning that he's going to start the year as the QB1 and Minshew was okay last year he like somehow made the all-star games and so many teams or quarterbacks turned it down but he goes out there he's top five at completing passes against zone coverage 16 so average against man coverage of course being in a Shane Steichen led offense in Indianapolis probably helped that in the way that they were scheming some players open but it still was nice to see that he was able to produce a top 10 volume and top 10 production season for one Michael Pittman and when you look at what the quarterback room was Jimmy G before injury Aiden O'Connell Brian Hoyer for like a half a game last year none of these guys were all that great O'Connell showed flashes in the preseason during the regular season not great I think we can easily say that this is going to help the pass catchers and most notably Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers it's not the ultimate upgrade that you wanted to see out of them right going out and getting maybe a top end quarterback on the market but Baker was always going back to Tampa Cousins was linked to Atlanta pretty early on and the money really wasn't there to go to the Raiders it just wasn't a good market so you get Gardner Minshew it's a somewhat of an upgrade for these guys we'll touch quickly on John U. Smith because he was probably the biggest addition for the Miami Dolphins like they lost Robert Hunt an offensive lineman in free agency they lost some pieces but overall John U. Smith probably the biggest ad for fantasy purposes looks right now based on the money and the depth chart to be the tight end one and here's his biggest skill set John U. Smith is efficient he was top 12 in tight end efficiency last year with Atlanta and he's also great after the catch this dude's an elite athlete which fits perfectly into this offense of Miami you have all these running backs who can get to the outside who could pick up yards after contact you have these receivers of course and Tyreek and Waddle and now you have a tight end who fits that mold lastly is the Denver Broncos we talked on guys they lost in Jerry Judy and Russell Wilson they haven't added anybody they literally have not added anybody they re-signed like their fullback nothing really was done here in the offseason and their quarterback room right now is Jared Stidham as their QB1 and then also Ben DiNucci do they sign a Ryan Tannehill as I'm recording this is that an option for them do they try and get somehow a quarterback in this draft because there are a lot of them but would it be like a Bo Nix or a Michael Penix later on that's what we'll have to wait and see as the NFL draft stuff approaches so these have been the big key free agency moves out of the AFC teams I'll have the NFC later in the week hopefully this helps you and you can start to take some notes mentally or physically and sort of stash it away as the summer approaches for fantasy hopefully this helped you out be sure if you want to check out and get the early pre-order for the 2024 fantasy blueprint there's a QR code on the screen right now or you can just click the link in the description below you'll get it at a discounted rate and just secure it and make sure that you have one of those blueprints for this year early on i appreciate you tuning in this is actually our first video heading into the 2024 fantasy season nfc will be out later in the week so if you aren't already for whatever reason make sure you hit the subscribe button and i'll see you all in the next one